In this next lesson, we're going to be taking a look at the request for quote or the RFQ functionality within X3. Uh, the request for quotes can be a useful tool for purchasing managers who are looking to shop out uh, purchase requests uh, to obtain uh, pricing and lead times uh, for their various vendors. So to do an RFQ, uh, we're going to come under our purchasing block here. Then under the RFQ option here, we're going to come in and click on the new button, specify our request site. Then now, uh, in this case, I'm going to come down in the lower left hand corner and click on the select purchase requests. Now we should also uh, make note that over here under our options block, we also have a purchase request selection criteria that we can utilize if you have a large number of requests to choose from. Okay, so you can again filter on supplier or product and everything that you have, all these filters that you set in here will serve to uh, whittle down the uh, request options here in the left list. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and click on this request 004 here. And uh, X3 will go ahead and bring in the products that were defined on that uh, purchase request with their respective quantities. Then in addition to that, if the purchase request is set up with um, requested suppliers, those will also appear in here. Uh, now another nice option that we have through the action buttons here is we have this option um, called common suppliers to the products. Now when we invoke this, what X3 is going to do is it's going to look to the uh, suppliers tab of the uh, products on our RFQ. And if we have uh, suppliers associated with the product, we'll get a full list within here. So if I want to go ahead and send this out to all suppliers who could potentially supply me with this product, I can come over here and click on the include all button, then go ahead and click on OK. And that'll go ahead and add that supplier to my list here. Okay, then I can come over here, click on the Create button, and that will go ahead and create my RFQ. So next, to print out the RFQ, I can come over and click on my printer icon, then come to Record. Then here at the Report Parameters, I'll go ahead and click on Print. And that will go ahead and pull up my report to a PDF format. And here are the an RFQ form uh, for each supplier that's set up. You'll notice in this case that uh, this is in a foreign language because uh, these suppliers are located overseas. So the next thing that we're going to want to look at uh, with respect to the RFQs is how to uh, send out or track reminders for the request for quote. So back here at the main screen under the RFQ block we have this reminders option. So again this is useful in cases where um, you, just, you, know, you need to send out a friendly reminder to your supplier that you need uh, the pricing information back from them. So if I come under reminders I can come into my RFQ field here and go ahead and choose the RFQ that I want to send out the reminder on. Uh, then down in this block here are all my suppliers. In this section right here, this will keep track of the number of times uh, you've reminded the vendor, the date of the last reminder, then of these suppliers, which ones uh, have we got feedback from yet? So now I can come over here and click on OK. And that will register a reminder. So to print out uh, a reminder letter uh, for the suppliers, if I come down under my printouts, then under my prints by group, I'm going to come to purchasing, then external documents. 
In here, I have RFQ reminders. Go ahead and specify the RFQ that I want to remind suppliers on. I'll specify the site that it was generated out of. Then my request for quote limit, I'm going to go ahead and blank that out. I don't want to set an upper limit on that. I'm going to come here and do a print. And this will go ahead and generate a report here, request for quote reminder. Okay. So again, we can send this back out. Um, to the suppliers as a friendly reminder. Now the next thing that uh, we'll want to take a look at uh, for the RFQ is to how to record the responses that we get back from the suppliers. So back up under our purchasing menu under RFQs we have this responses option. So in here under response management I'm going to click on the new button specify my RFQ site then I can come over here to my supplier field click on the action button then go to my selection option and this will show me my kind of my open RFQs for the various suppliers so I can go ahead and click on the supplier that I got the feedback from specify the line item on the RFQ that they're responding to and OK. Over here on the products tab this is where we can come to to specify the date that we got the response back. Here's the their supplier cross-reference. We can set it up here if it hasn't otherwise been established already. Over here on our price tab we can specify the price reason. So this is a supplier price list. If the supplier has any, you know, quantity breaks um, in their quote, you can specify that there. You can specify the lead time and days. Here in the price field, this is where we can put in the unit price for the product and the validity date range over which these prices are good. Once we have that all set up, we can come here and click on the Create button. Once we go through and record the responses, you know, all our responses that we get back against the RFQ, here in the Response Management, I can come over to my printer icon, come to the List option, and I'm going to go ahead and print out this uh, RFQ reply listing. And I want to do it for this RFQ. And here's the report that pops up. So this reply listing, it can be a kind of a useful tool to, for you to kind of get a 360 view of all the feedback that you got on the RFQ on each product. Uh, the response, um, you know, for each line for your different suppliers, have all your pricing information, lead time information, and the date range over which those prices are good. So the next element that we would uh, probably like to take a look at is um, these these RFQ responses that we got back. Um, many times, folks will take these uh, responses and go ahead and use them uh, for purposes of generating a price list within the system that can be referenced on future purchases that we make to that supplier for the good. So again, under the RFQ section, I can come to this option here for the price list generation. Come in and select my supplier. So this is for my RFQ. I'm going to record the response here. 
Oops, in the RFQ number, the line. I'm going to come down and click on my process block for the product. Come over here and click on OK. And that'll go ahead and generate a new price, li uh, price list record for me. To see that price list record that's created, I can close out of here. And still under my purchasing menu, come to price list and price list entry. I'm going to come under my T20 supplier slash product price. And there's my price uh, record ending in 003. So here's all our attributes all set up. Supplier, product, validity date range, and the price. So once again, whenever a purchase order is now input, uh, for this product uh, to the supplier, this 588 is going to be the reference price on the order. So next, a useful, a useful report that you might consider when tracking the progress of your RFQs. Um, if I come back under RFQs and under my main RFQ function here, couple things that you'll note here. So on this RFQ down here at the bottom, this kind of gives me some summary information on the number of uh, responses um, by supplier by product that I've got back so far. So I can tell, I can see that this rotor, rotor, rotor bike components uh, company has quoted me back on two products. I sent them out one reminder letter on this date. Um, I can see this uh, supplier down here. I haven't got any responses back. Um, in terms of a report, if I come over to my printer icon, then down under list, I have this RFQ list I can print out. And when I run this uh, report, this will give me the RFQ list and again giving me summary information by product and by supplier.